Well, massive bile has been found when my uh, uncle has been diagnosed uh, with cancer. And at that point in time, you know, uh, since I come from an engineering background, I start to kind of look for colleagues uh, from a medical background, from a technology background. Um. Yeah, so one of the things I, you know, when I go back and remember how we met and, you know, we started with Massive Bio, there was these random posts about <laughs> working in... Yes, and it's been really a great journey with our and Selen as co-founders. It's been, I guess, about seven or eight years already in it. Well, massive bio has been found that when my uh, uncle has been diagnosed uh, with cancer, and at that point in time, you know, uh, since I come from an engineering background, I start to kind of look for colleagues uh, from a medical background, from a technology background. Um, one of the fundamental things about massive bio uh, is that all of us, you know, my uncle, uh, Arturo's brother, um, or Chow Tai's uncle, all of us has at least one uh, story uh, with cancer. And this is not just a business for us. This is also a uh, personal passion for us. Yeah, so one of the things I, you know, when I go back and remember how we met and, you know, we started with Massive Bio, there was these random posts about <laughs> working uh, as a consultant for, you know, a new company that was coming together and just, you know, it, it was almost on the stealth mode, kind of like understand how we as oncologists uh, understood genomics and clinical trials and different options. And I felt it was like an interesting challenge uh, and it was posted in the most random place of all. So I, I, I felt this is something I want to just look into because it's so interesting. Uh, I, I took the challenge and after a couple of months, we all came together and said, let's just do this. Yes, and it's been really a great journey with our trend selling as co-founders. It's been, I guess, about seven or eight years already. Mm -hmm. When my uncle became cancer, then I started to realize that how it is difficult for patients to get the right support. And I have been following Selin at that time. And when I heard that she has started this business, I started to think that that's a really interesting and uh, humanitarian mission to help people. We met at the lobby, she discussed what she has as a dream. And that was the moment that I decided to leave everything behind and become part of the Massive Bio family. You know, one thing that I wanted to say is that, you know, one of the most important factors in developing a successful startup is the kind of the complementary nature of the co-founders. And I think there are three areas that we, you know, as a three co-founders at Massive Bio complement each other. One of them is kind of our kind of subject matter expertise in different areas. You know, I'm a commercial person, Artur is a medical person, Chatai is a technology product and operations person. So we complement each other in that way. The second way that we complement each other is our personalities. You know, I'm a very inflexible person, Arturo is very flexible, and Chatai is in between. I think that one of the things that I look back and, and I feel that the reason why we have survived despite many others trying to solve this problem, right. because we, we talk about it, this is not a new problem. This is yeah. something that's happened before and, and many others come with the same ideas, but they, they didn't succeed. I, I think it's because we are not looking for this from you know the pure services side and the pure technology side, but we're combining them both. Right. Right. So this is the right time because now we have access to genomics, we have access to mobile technology. There's internet. There is an AI solution that we can put together into into play. And we also, once we have optimized all those touch points in terms of data, uh, for example, collecting the records, doing the OCR, the NLP, the access to the EHR system, matching the patients in real time quickly, and the providing engagement, we also have that last mile operationalization component that is combined along with that. Right. I think that there are certain things that technology can solve and, and can make things very efficient, which is what we have been focused on very heavily. Uh, but also there's this last, last touch point that is key for patients to really get there. Uh, and, and I think that's the, the measure of success and also a reflection of the fact that we are actually living on the cancer environment every day. Like we, the three of us 
had an experience in our families with a personal experience and we have gone through every single fire possible in the last you know now eight years together uh, where we've seen every single problem in the world and we're trying to come together to solve it. Uh, so it's, it's never easy, but you know, that's the reason we, why we're still doing it and thriving. Yes, and I believe the dedication of the Master Bio team overall, the quality of our people is also a big ingredient of this success, I can say. But you're the expert in that. You, you, yes. you, you talk to all of them now, <laughs> yeah. more than so, I do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, as I always say that, I wanted to the massive buy to be in the living room for every cancer patient. So the cancer patients uh, would be in their living room. They kind of push a button and that application for screen stem for the 14,000 active and pretty clinical trials in the world. And at that moment in time, you know, they are activating their clinical trial enrollment process so that they have access but that they have an operationalizable access to those 14,000 options uh, for the ones that they wanted to proceed with. They don't have to get, you know, discriminated. They don't have to get uh, kind of uh, stopped by any other uh, outside force. You know, if they would like to proceed with any of these options that makes the most uh, sense, both from a clinical and operational perspective, they should be able to activate that from their living room and they need to proceed. So that's my dream. Uh, you know, it has to be consumer oriented, it has to be access oriented, it has to be simple because they're going through a very a challenging journey. But what I can also tell you is that, you know, right now we are at the stage one of the three stage vision that we have for Massive Bio. So finding them a clinical trial, it's the first, I think, journey in this three stage destination. Uh, the second stage of the destination is uh, basically going and finding them uh, drugs. And then the third destination, it's more around uh, either repurposing or creating new drugs for them. So we are at the first stage. We are uh, grateful for the opportunity that has been presented to us. But the vision is so uh, big and bold and we are really excited what's yet to come. I also envision that we continue to touch the lives of all the cancer patients on a global scale. So we are right now operational on the 14 or 15 countries, but I feel like uh, in the near future, we will have a much wider outreach on a global scale in different countries, people speaking different languages. And also I totally believe that our brand will continue to grow to the level when it's a cancer patient or a caregiver. Massive Boy will be the number one uh, name that they will remember versus some of the other well-known organizations. And they will trust Masibayo. Uh, and when they are cancer, it will be the first organization they will pick up the phone and send a message to get support. I mean, uh, the, the thing about startups is that, you know, the only thing you're certain is that you don't know anything. You're gonna, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> One day everything looks perfect. The day after is a disaster about to break. <laughs> right? So, and and it's like at any single level, there's you know storms that come left and right. Uh, so it's having the resilience uh, all the team to making sure that they understand that there's fast movements all the time. That we are adaptable. That we're able to, you know, ensure that we have that. And that's something that I mean. Sometimes we as physicians myself. I mean, we're used to certain pathways and things don't change much. I mean, of course, life changes and we deal with cancer and that can be problematic. And one day the cancer is doing well, the other day is not. But, you know, at, when you do it at a micro scale, managing a team, getting almost 100 employees, right? It gets a little bit challenging. Yes, we say startup, but I, we are in a scale up <laughs> mode. You know, we are already 80 plus people and we'll be hopefully more than 100 people in the coming months. So... It's a decent organization, and the exciting part of a startup is, especially with Massive Bio, is the quick decision-making process. I love it. So it's not like huge organizations. So the, the, the staff comes up with great ideas. You draw it on the board, and co-founders or the managers they discuss it. And if we believe that it's the right way to go, it's a decision made, and we can yeah, yeah it, it's instantaneous. And the second part is there is nothing wrong. You know, the, all the decisions are okay. 
on the way you can sometimes hit the barriers but it's you never end you continue to hit until you find the opening and you get the results because we are just learning we can adapt and we can change things in a much more efficient way so it is not that you know there is something that is fixed and this is the only way you're gonna do it it's like no let's find a new way uh, and it's okay to you know go go back to point zero and start again it, it as long as you are still floating there's a journey right so that's the motto that we're looking for and we're looking also that if we really gonna change the way clinical trials are delivered for patients with cancer we really have to have that mindset so to me is you know having that flexibility that really makes a difference uh and 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 i think this is something that all the three of us recognize and and despite the scuffles and things that happen here and there we we all learn from it so uh it, it, it that's that's something that i appreciate from from being a startup yeah but i think the thing that has evolved over time is you know like since massive bio is my life the people at massive bio are a part of my family that means that you know, I genuinely care about those people. That is the part that, you know, I don't think that I was this aware and this cognizant about, you know, getting into the details, become a part of their family, become a part of a lot of the, even the decision making things that they're making uh, in, the, in their family, you know, that has changed dramatically. And again, I'm learning uh, over time more, but I become a more integral part of their life as much as that they become an integral part of my life uh, as well. So, but I think for us, since we spend so much time together uh, on a given day, you cannot really continue a traditional, um, I would say boss and employee relationship. This is much beyond than that. And this is just sharing our lives sharing our experiences, sharing the good days and the bad days. Or oh, before Massive Bio, I've been through several different organizations of different scales, like managing hundreds or thousands of people to a couple of people at some time, mostly being an employee and have very specific roles and responsibilities. But with Massive Bio, like Selin and Artro wearing several hats, I also wear several hats, so I became a bit more adaptable. So adaptable leadership, let's put it that way, where depending on the situation, you sometimes have to be really strong to make decisions and quick decisions and have them executed. But at times you have to be a friend to you or a negotiator so that the results can be delivered in a much more efficient way. So it's really about being flexible uh, and adaptable. And also we are building knowledge at the same time at Massive Bio. So something doesn't exist. So with the company, it's not only about the technology, it's not only about data or uh, the operations, it's the knowledge that we are building, the know-how. Uh, so as a leader, we, I think, all trying to make sure that that knowledge is being spread across to the rest of the staff. We are solving a very difficult problem, and I know that we are not going to bring the people to Mars, and we are literally at the bicycle level on Earth at this point in time. But what I can tell is that if there is one company that is going to remove to crack that code, it's going to be massive by. And I think in the future, when we see massive bio uh, in other parts of the world uh, with a bigger headquarter uh, and gr great office with maybe thousands of people uh, then we will remember these days uh, and we will say we, we, we reached our goal at the end of the day we are just getting started <laughs> yeah. it's the day one for us every day and every day